Everything in my bag for wildlife and landscape photography. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liam and today I'm going to be going over all of the gear and accessories that I use for wildlife and landscape photography, specifically the trip that I'm going on tomorrow to Big Bend National Park in West Texas. Now the list of gears and accessories that I've compiled today will all be in the description below with a link so you can check them out, read the reviews and see if it's right for you. But ultimately, I'm also interested to know if there's any tips and tricks or gears or accessories that I'm missing that I can include into my bag. Full disclosure, I'm just a guy that likes wildlife and landscape photography, so the links down below are not affiliate links. There's no type of sponsorship in this video. This is my honest opinion of the gear that works for me. So without further delay, let's just jump right into the video. So first up on the list is the Sony 200 to 600 5.6 to 6.3. This lens is so important for my wildlife photography and videography. I can't imagine not having this in my bag. Now I did add the Roland Pro rain cover to really help with the scrapes and the dings that might happen over the course of the, the time that we're out in the field, but also to help keep moisture out. This rain cover is waterproof and I found myself in some rainy, foggy conditions in the morning and this thing has really protected my lens. Now my only complaint with this cover so far is this end piece where you can access your controls. It does conveniently fall off at times, so when the lens is not attached to my camera, this does end up happening, but it's a minor inconvenience. Additionally, I have added the Wimberly replacement lens foot, just because the lens foot that comes with the 200 to 600 does not have the archetype mount for my ball head and my gimbal. This also doubles as a really good handle when you're out in the field very convenient to carry so on those days where I'm just taking photos of some birds or some wildlife on the run this is really useful so I will say that this lens is somewhat heavy but for the price for the focal range I can't imagine not having this in my bag the next lens that I got in my bag is the 70 to 200 f4 by Sony now when I first purchased this lens years ago I was between the f4 and the f2.8 as we always are and felt that since I shoot mainly landscapes, I didn't need that aperture of 2.8. I don't shoot any type of portraiture, I don't shoot product photography, and quite frankly, for the less money, this lens has been everything that I wanted and more. Last year when I was at Big Bend National Park, I was able to capture photos like this, this, and this, all using the Sony 70-200 f4. For those wide-angle landscape shots, I'm using the Sony Vario Tessar FB 24-70 f4 lens. I've had this lens for going on seven years now and it's been everything that I've needed. I do a lot of hiking, a lot of camping, a lot of backpacking, and this lens is really compact and it's lightweight, it's taken a beating over the years, and it's still working to this day. With the new GM 24-70 f2.8 II lens, it is an enticing upgrade, but with the size and with the weight, I don't think that I'll be switching out my 24-70 in my bag. Now all of these lenses need to be paired up with a camera body, and I'm using the archaic Sony a7R II that I am desperately needing to upgrade. If you're a Sony user, please let me know down in the comments if you're using the Sony a7 IV or potentially the new Sony a7R V, because I'm interested to know what you might be shooting with. While not as flashy as lenses might be, the tripod is one of the most beneficial tools you can have for photography in the field. Now, I'm using the Robus RC5570 Vantage Series 3 carbon fiber tripod. I do have two different mounts for it. I've got a ball head and a gimbal head, and both of those have their different uses. Now, the ball head I primarily use for landscape photography, but this new Leo Photo LH55 low profile ball head has a maximum load of 55 pounds and I'm able to put my archetype 200 to 600 lens foot onto this and tighten it to the perfect setting and I'm able to use this ball head in the field for wildlife photography. While that's not the most ideal, I do also have this gimbal head that allows me to get those super smooth videos that I want when I'm shooting different white-tailed deer or different birds up in the trees. And this gimbal head is the SIRUI P2 
PH10 carbon fiber gimbal head. Haven't had any complaints other than the fact that this panning device at the bottom sometimes loosens up and this whole gimbal head does start to screw off of my tripod mount screw. So I have to tighten the panning device here and then crank it so it tightens and then I loosen this up and use my panning feature again. My only complaint, but for the price, it's certainly great value. And I just saw the other day that Really Right Stuff just released a gimbal head for around $1,000. And I think this one was 300. Link is down in the description. So you tell me if a $1,000 gimbal head is worth it. I'd be interested to hear your opinion. So for wildlife, camouflage is of the utmost importance. And this is the Tragopan Grouse V Plus Photography Blind. I've been able to get some great video and great photographs of birds and deer, all using this photography blind. In the top right corner of this video, you will see a link to a previous shoot I did where I was able to capture some great shots of white-tailed deer here in the hill country of Texas, all using this photography blind. Now, when you're spending hours in a photography blind, you need something to sit on. I'm using this Alps Outdoors stool that is very compact. It does break down and fit into my backpack quite nicely, but it is really uncomfortable. I would say maybe 45 minutes to an hour into any type of photography session, uh, I'm starting to feel it. So I'd be interested to hear, are any of you using photography chairs or specific stools that you use in your photography blind? Please let me know down in the comments. I can't be the only one that has poor circulation to their extremities. So this year for the winter, I purchased these Piggy Tech photography gloves that I feel will make a major difference for those sunrise photo shoots and allow me to stay out longer in the field. What I really like about these gloves is their ability to take off the thumb, the index, and the middle finger, giving you great access to your settings and the different buttons on your camera. As all of you are probably well aware of, it's difficult to carry all of the gear that you need into the field when you're doing landscape or wildlife photography. But I've narrowed down my backpacks to these two here. One is the Gregor Baltoro 75, and the other is the Thule Covert DSLR camera bag. Both of these bags have their different usage. The Gregor is gonna be my wildlife specific video and photography session backpack. Whereas my Thule is gonna be that everyday walking around or if I'm just carrying my 200 to 600 handheld for the day, this is gonna be the bag that I use. Specifically with the Gregor, I'm able to fit my 200 to 600, my photography blind, my tripod, both with a gimbal head and a ball head, and all of the other accessories like batteries, filters that I might need when I'm out shooting in the field. The back here has a lot of different padding and a waist strap to help balance out the weight around your hips that I found to be very useful in making sure that you can stay out in the field longer. I will say the one downside to this backpack is it's designed for hiking and there are a lot of different zippers giving you access inside this bag, but I would love a backpack that might have back access to your camera, camera gear specifically. So I'm interested if there's any recommendations out there for a photography specific bag that's able to carry a lot of gear. But for now, I'm happy with both of these bags and you'll be seeing a lot of them in the upcoming videos from Big Bend National Park. So how do I film myself? I use a GoPro Hero 10 Black as my B-roll and talking camera when I'm using my Sony a7R II for the different wildlife and landscape shots that I'm taking. Now I will save you the time of having to watch me talk about all of the different accessories that you can use with your GoPro, but I have picked a few here that I feel are the most beneficial for me when I'm taking video. First up is the LumCube 2.0. This thing packs a punch. And paired up with the GoPro and the GoPro Media Mod, I'm able to slide in this ball head to the top of the Media Mod, and now I have a vlog-style camera for those low-light scenarios, specifically early in the morning or late at night when this GoPro just will not be dealing with the low-light very well. But on the other end of the spectrum, when there is a lot of light and I need to keep my shutter speed low so I can shoot in 24 frames per second, 
I got the Polar Pro ND filters. And these Polar Pro ND filters for the GoPro add a lot of contrast. So like I said, I'm gonna be out in Big Bend National Park for the next week or so. And I fully expect the days where I'm walking around the desert and there's no shade to be needing to use these. And of course, as my vlogging setup, I need to be able to speak to the camera. And that's where the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone comes into play. What's really convenient with the GoPro Media Mod is I can slide in the Rode Wireless Go directly to the hot shoe and plug it in to the Media Mod and then I can record my voice directly into the GoPro so everything is lined up when I need to go edit later on. Now someday I do wanna upgrade from using a GoPro as my B-roll or vlogging style setup. My biggest complaint has been the lack of ability for me to use different focal ranges with the GoPro, which of course makes sense. That's not what the GoPro is designed for, but something like the 24 to 105 lens by Sony would be great to have for a vlogging setup. So I can get a lot more B-roll shots without having to take off lenses from my main camera. And finally, we have this mess right here. A lot of different cables, storage devices, battery chargers, different filters for my lenses. I needed a way to take all of this and put it into an organized bag. So I picked up a Maton large travel storage bag that's going to take all of the things on this table and put it into one bag that's gonna be easy to carry, throw into the car on day trips, and know that I have all of the different tools and accessories I need when I'm out in the field. So that's gonna be the end of my what's in the bag video for winter 2022. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Please hit that like button to let me know that I have all of the accessories that I possibly need. But if I miss something, please leave a comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to see all of the content that I'll be making in the coming days and weeks from Big Bend National Park out in West Texas. But for now, thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.